Hi guys, it's me Chazzer HD, and welcome to this incident analysis video and of course we are only going to analyse one thing and it is the crash between Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton on lap, uh, what was it, 25 or 26 of the Italian Grand Prix uh, just after Lewis Hamilton's first and what would go on to be, of course, his only pit stop. Now, what we're first going to look at is the incident itself and we are not going to get into yet what the FIA have said uh, penalties and stuff like that we're going to just first get into my view of the incident and why in my view this is just a racing incident and I'm going to explain why so you can see Lewis Hamilton on the right hand side um, on the right of the pit lane exit line he's come up from a stop uh, a slowish pit stop for Lewis Hamilton Max Verstappen, he's had a very slow pit stop, of course. He's now piling down to turn one. And now he sees Hamilton there. He knows, with him on the racing line, that there is a chance he can go for a move here. But it will still be a bit of 50-50. Now, move on to this point. As Hamilton, you know, say, starts to break. Of course, Max Verstappen a lot closer now. But most importantly for Verstappen... He is on the racing line, so he will have more grip than Lewis Hamilton and will be able to, if he can, which of course is what he tried to do, go around the outside and use that extra grip to, like I said, go around the outside and make it stick. Now, at this point, which is, I'd still say the entry of the corner, and I think given what the FIA said in their statement um, in regards to this incident, after the race, very important to remember this shot, and I will come back to this later on. I would still class this as the entry to the corner. Max Verstappen, he's not alongside yet, but he is, like I said, because he's on the racing line more so than Hamilton is, Verstappen will have automatically more speed and carry more speed into the apex and into turn two as well. That's just common sense. And at this point, which I would still classify as the entry, because they're not quite at the apex yet where Lando Norris is. Now Lando Norris is pretty much now on the apex of the corner. But like I said, they are now pretty much at the a uh, not at the apex, but you know they're still, I would say, in the entry phase to turn one. And like I said, when it comes to the FIA statement after the Grand Prix in regards to this incident. I think important to remember uh, this photo as well because I would still class this as the entry to the corner. And I'll get onto that in a few moments' time. But Max Verstappen at this point is halfway alongside Lewis Hamilton's car. And because, like I've said, Max is on the grippier line coming into the corner, Max is obviously going to send it around the outside. And if I was in his position, I'd do the same, without a doubt. But I'll get into in just a moment why Max probably should have backed out at a certain point. Now, if we get onto this now, this next picture, at this point, if Max continues to move his way alongside, if Hamilton gives him slightly enough room, then I think Max Verstappen makes this overtake work. Now, whether he would have made it stick going up into the second chicane of turn four and five, who knows? Who knows what would have happened? But at this point, given where Hamilton's car is and where Max's car is, I would have to say that the overtake is absolutely viable and should be attempted if you look at it from this point. But at this point, and this is where if there's any blame for Lewis Hamilton, I'd have to apportion it here. Lewis Hamilton, I don't think, gives Max Verstappen enough room on the outside of the corner. Because at this point, Hamilton is quite a bit further to the left than he was if i go back just a picture at this point hamilton is pretty much on the apex and now he has washed out and um, a bit more towards the left hand side of max verstappen you can see is at full lock now like i said with hamilton and we'll see in the next picture as well that um that lewis hamilton i don't believe gave max verstappen enough space i'm not saying lewis hamilton should have just disappeared or pulled right over and let max go not saying that at all but i think if he had gave Max Verstappen, a tad more room, I think this probably would have gone through just about okay. But from Max Verstappen's point of view, at this point, considering he's at full lock and Lewis Hamilton is definitely 
more over to the center or even left uh, hand side of the gr uh, not grid, the track. I th I'd say at this point, if I'm in his position, and I'm surprised Max at this point continued to go for the move, because at this point, I would have probably backed out of it because because Hamilton has moved across a bit more the chances of Max now making this overtake work are a lot lower because if he does make it work then he's almost certainly going to have to make some contact even if it's slight contact with Lewis Hamilton to be ahead of him on the exit of turn two and you can see that orange sausage curb he's probably going to be about on that if he continues to go for this move. So at this point, Max Verstappen, without a doubt, I believe should back out. Not fully. I think probably should have, say, maybe braked a tad more just to allow Hamilton to hold the outside line so they made it through the corner. But I don't believe Max Verstappen should have continued at this point to keep going uh, through with the move because you can see at this point, Verstappen's still going for it. Hamilton, like I said, I don't think he was giving enough room. But because Max Verstappen has not, you know, pulled out of the move, which he should have done, there's no doubt about it, you can now see he is heading for a disaster. He absolutely is. Because, like I said, even if he makes this overtake work and they get through the corner, contact will absolutely have to be made because of how tight the corner is through the apex and how Hamilton has positioned his car. And with Verstappen already at this point now, one wheel on the green AstroTurf, Verstappen almost certainly is then going to hit the, uh, the not AstroTurf, the orange uh, sausage curb. And that, of course, is what, um, at this point, that's what sends him into Lewis Hamilton. Again, like I said with Hamilton, he gave a tad more room and stayed a bit more towards the middle instead of being a bit slightly more to the left. I think this might have just been okay in terms of these two getting through turn two without an incident. But because Verstappen has continued with the move, which I think was the wrong decision, he's only going to do one thing and do that fly into Lewis Hamilton. Now, like I said, Lewis Hamilton, I think, could have done better. I think could have left more room. But it's a small thing, really. And at that speed... Um, well, they weren't going at a, a very quick speed, but considering how quickly things were happening, I can understand why a mistake like that would be made. So I'm not going to, you know, massively criticize the guy, but I do believe he should have left a bit more room uh, on the inside there. And he absolutely knew Max Verstappen is there, so there's, there's no doubt about that. But like I said with Verstappen, Max Verstappen... When it was clear that Lewis Hamilton was not going to give him enough room really to make the overtake work without contact being made, Verstappen should have pulled out of it and let Hamilton go, but he didn't. He kept going, went over the orange uh, sausage curb and went into Lewis Hamilton. And for me, it's a 50-50. I think they're both to blame. They both really caused the accident. Lewis Hamilton defending too aggressively and then Max Verstappen in response attacking too aggressively. And that is what caused the accident to happen. Now, Max Verstappen, as you guys will probably know, has a now three-place grid penalty for the Russian Grand Prix because the stewards deemed that Max Verstappen was at fault for this accident, which I have to say, this is not just for the stewards, but anyone out there who thinks Max Verstappen is at fault, I have no problem with you whatsoever. I can completely understand why you would think Max Verstappen deserves a penalty. I completely agree. I'm not completely agree, but I completely understand why you come to that conclusion. Because, yeah, Verstappen obviously went into Hamilton and Verstappen um, could have done better. There is no doubt about that. No doubt about it whatsoever. But the reasoning behind the FIA stewards decision is quite poor. And we'll get into it now. So if I could just go back, um, go back to this picture. So, and I'll just quickly get to the part, I'm just going to quickly read it out, the part of the statement. Uh, of course, they listened to both drivers and what they had to say. So according to the stewards, they observed CCTV that uh, the driver of Lewis Hamilton was driving an avoiding line, uh, although his position caused Max Verstappen to go onto the curb. Uh, this is what they're saying in the statement, um, to, you know, announce Max Verstappen had the penalty. 
that say, but further the stewards observed that car 33 Max Verstappen was not at all alongside car 44 until significantly into the entry um, in turn one. In the opinion of the stewards, this manoeuvre was attempted too late for the driver of car 33 to have the right to racing room. That is the reason, essentially, why uh, Max Verstappen got the penalty, which for me is not good reasoning. If, it, if the reasoning was, well, Max Verstappen was too aggressive and, you know, technically left uh, the track in a way to bundle into Lewis Hamilton at turn two, if, if that was their more so reasoning, then I could understand. But um, and they even say while car uh, 44 could have steered further away from the curb to avoid the incident, the stewards determined that his position was reasonable and therefore find Max Verstappen predominantly to blame for the incident. But if I um, just quickly show through the pictures again, I don't understand why the stewards... And yes, they were right in saying that, yeah, he was alongside uh, into the entry in turn one. But I don't understand the, you know, he attempted it too late. And I'm going to show why. So at this point, they're not even in turn one. Um, and then at this point, they're now coming into the entry phase. Now, like I said, Max Verstappen, because he's on the racing line coming into the corner, he's always going to get alongside Lewis Hamilton because he he's carrying more speed in to the corner and they're not yet at the apex so i don't believe in this whole the maneuver was attempted too late i, I don't believe so the, the space is clearly ahead there for max verstappen to go for it it's not like he has braked way too late and forced his way in there he hasn't done that at all i mean of course he's braked very late to get alongside lewis hamilton but not unnecessarily too late to get alongside lewis hamilton and even at this point they're not even into the apex of turn one. And yeah, he is significantly alongside. But I don't understand why they deem that he attempted, you know, the manoeuvre too late when there's still plenty of the chicane to go. I just don't understand that reasoning. I really don't. Given that situation of, you know, this, where you've got a car coming out of the pit lane and a car you know, fast approaching, going quicker than the car exiting the pit lane and the car going quicker than the car exiting the pit lane is on the racing line. I don't understand how the car that isn't, you know, to the right of the pit lane exit line, why that car should just let that car go when there's clearly, as I showed, um, if we we'll go back to this picture, there was clearly space for Max Verstappen to go for it. And I don't believe Max Verstappen braked unnecessarily late, but... Like I said, if Max Verstappen, um, if the reason for them giving him a penalty was because he, you know, went a bit off the track and then bundled into Verstappen and was dangerous or whatever, if they were, you know, if that was their reasoning, then I could at least understand where they were coming from. But the reason I just think was very, very poor from the FIA stewards. And of course, the stewards aren't exactly the greatest when it comes to their reasoning. Uh, for things but i just want to finally get into this picture as well um it's not the exact picture of what i'm talking about but the halo absolutely saved lewis hamilton's life because verstappen's uh, car landed pretty much on his head and without the halo lewis hamilton might not be alive right now i know that might be dramatic to say but given the angles that we saw of how Verstappen's car landed on Hamilton's car and head, I think that's a, a reasonable thing to say. I really think so. And I think the Halo, again, great job. And it has saved so many people in the last few uh, years. Charles Leclerc in 2018, um, Roman Grosjean in 2020, and Lewis Hamilton here. So, you know, just imagine a world without those three. It would be... Just so tragic, so, so tragic. But yeah, thankfully, Lewis Hamilton got away mostly okay. I think he said his neck was stiff or in a slight bit of pain, which is not great. But given what happened in the incident, it could have been a lot worse. But like I said, in my view, it's a 50-50. Hamilton could have given more space. Verstappen, though, too aggressive. And like I said, 
if you think Verstappen is at fault and deserve the penalty, then no problem at all. If you think Hamilton's at fault, no problem at all. I can see both ends of the scale. I can see both sides of the argument here when it comes to this incident. But guys, let me know in the comments section, who do you think was at fault in this incident? And if you want to give your analysis, then go for it. And secondly, um, with the penalty and the reasoning behind the penalty for Verstappen, do you agree or disagree with it or disagree with my analysis or whatever? Let me know in the comment section down below. And also, like I said, again, uh, when debating me or anyone else when it comes to the incident, please don't resort to insults or anything like that because you'll just get removed from uh, the comments on the channel because, you know, you don't need to resort to such things to get across a point. But guys, thank you for watching this video. Thanks for tuning into the content this weekend. If you have done so, if you are new, uh, don't forget to subscribe for more race weekend content. But until my race watch along best bits compilation coming out tomorrow at 12 p.m. UK time, and until the Russian Grand Prix in, uh, what, 10 or 11 days time from now, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.